The Lone Ranger! with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hyo Morita, the Lone Stranger eats again. Stranger, me got riddle. If you lose, you give me Marita. Okay, then I want to play Parcheesi. Hmm. Why is Lone Stranger like Marita, old-fashioned enriched white bread? I give up, Pronto. Why am I like Marita, old-fashioned enriched white bread? Because Marita, old-fashioned enriched white bread, the freshest bread in South, and Lone Stranger, fastest draw in West. Hey, that's good. There are more. Why is Lone Stranger not like Marita, old-fashioned enriched white bread? I give up. Because Marita, old-fashioned enriched white bread, very, very soft, and Lone Stranger, very, very tough. Now, give me Marita. Sorry, Pronto. I just ate the last slice. Goodbye. Mm, that bad way to treat Pronto, but good way to end commercial. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Away! <laughs> faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! El Diablo was a name known and feared throughout the Southwest. Wherever men gathered, there was usually someone who could relate an experience with a notorious bandit. One morning at the sheriff's office in Pecos, the express agent was telling of a recent robbery. I was working late last night, Sheriff, getting a big shipment of cash ready to leave on the morning stage for Stockton. I heard the door open and turned to see who it was. Reach, senor, <laughs> cannot go for your gun. <laughs> no, though. See, si, senor. No doubt you have heard of El Diablo. <laughs> El Diablo? Oh, yes, yes. I, I won't move, mister. <laughs> Oh, you are wise, amigo. I shall not hesitate to shoot you if you do. Blackie, text. Clean yeah. up the safe quickly. All right. <laughs> Come on. Give me a hand. When hombres hear the name El Diablo, they shake too much to holy God. <laughs> Hurry, get the cash from the safe. Well, Sheriff, after they cleaned out the safe, they tied and gagged me and left me behind the counter. I was found only a short time ago. Well, doggone it. That means I had all night to make a getaway. How much did they take? Around $20,000. Eh? That hombre, El Diablo, is smooth talking, but he's plenty dangerous. Yes, that's right. He's already wanted for more than one murder. <laughs> well, they'll form a posse and see if we can pick up their trail. You said there were three of them? Well, that's all I saw, but it sounded like more than three rode away. Well, come on. We'll get that posse together. <laughs> That morning in a hideout cabin not far from town, the man called El Diablo sat talking to his followers. We have done well, senor Snow. Sure <laughs> have. Every lawman in the territory is looking for El Diablo, described as a tall Mexican. <laughs> Disguising myself as a Mexican and using an accent was the best idea I ever had. Sure was, Rush. You got them all guessing. Nobody suspects El Diablo is really... Russ Selden posing as a drifting cowpoke, huh? That's right, Blackie. <laughs> as usual, we took great pains to cover our tracks. You men stay here for a while until the excitement dies down. All, All right. right. What are you going to do, Russ? I'm going to town. That agent must have been found by this time. 
<laughs> I might even join the sheriff's posse and help search for El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> so long. See you later. Yeah, yeah right. Yes. The clever bandit rode to town and joined the posse. By subtle suggestion, he managed to steer them away from the vicinity of the hideout where his men were waiting. Later, after losing the trail, the posse was returning to town. Dang it, Nabbit. El Diablo was too clever for us. I was hoping we'd find him and his gunman this time. Yes, so was I, Sheriff. There's a cash shipment coming by stage day after tomorrow. I'd hate to have them get wind of it. Well, most likely by this time, that gang is a long way from here. Yes, I reckon so, Sheldon. They had a big start on us. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. The bandit leader returned to the hideout cabin. He told the men about the expected shipment, saying... <laughs> they didn't know they were giving the information directly to El Diablo. <laughs> I was glad to hear about it. You figure on grabbing that cash shipment from the stage? Sure. You, Tex, and I can handle the job, Blackie. The rest of the men will wait for us here. Then there won't be so many tracks to cover. Sure. Good, right. Good idea. When does the stage come through? It's due just before sundown, day after tomorrow. We'll stop it in Narrow Valley. After we pull that job, we'll leave this territory and head south. The afternoon that the stage was due, the bandit leader with Blackie and Tex waited in hiding in Narrow Valley. Once more, Russ Selden wore the disguise of El Diablo. He had cleverly used a berry stain to darken his skin in such a way that even careful scrutiny would not betray him. Tex was saying, Hey, you sure are a wizard at putting on that disguise, Russ. <laughs> and with the accent you use, you'd pass for a Mexican even below the border. Uh, hey, here comes the stage. Have your guns ready. We'll ride out shooting. Let's go. Get up, get up. Get up. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode a trail overlooking the valley. Look, fellow, three outlaws holding up the stage. Come here! Let's go! The masked man and Indian raced down the slope. Blackie and Tex turned and urged their horses into a gallop up the opposite slope, while El Diablo held back to exchange more shots with the oncoming masked man and Indian. Realizing his two companions had left, he too turned and headed up the other slope. We'll try to capture one of them, Tuttle. One far behind the other two. We'll get him. Montello! Cops come! The fleeing bandit leader looked back and saw the masked man and Indian moving closer. He emptied his gun in their direction. But the movements of his galloping horse spoiled his aim. And realizing his gun was empty, he holstered it and urged his horse to greater speed. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, come on. Once more, he glanced back, just as the Lone Ranger's lariat snaked out and yanked him from the saddle. Hey, what? You're covered. Tie him, Tuttle. Uh-huh. Get him. Why should a masked man want to capture El Diablo? So you're El Diablo, huh? Si, senor. Glad to hear it. The law wants you and your gun slicks. The law? But why... Of course. The masked man who helps the law. Time well, Toto. Uh, maybe we find hideout. Catch other men. There are more than the two you saw. And when I do not come back, he will know something is wrong and leave. Hmm. Toto, I have an idea. It's still not enough for me to study his features. He and I are about the same size and build. Uh, 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 what do you think of Kimasabi? I have dungarees and a shirt in my saddlebag similar to his. I'll put them on, disguise my features to look like him and ride his horse. Of course, I'll use an accent. Why you do that? I'll trail the other two men to the hideout and impersonate El Diablo. Long enough to lead them into a trap. The bandit leader's impulse was to speak in his natural voice, deriding the masked man's plan. Then, realizing the Lone Ranger and Indian still thought he was really a Mexican... He cleverly decided to keep up the pretense, hoping the gang would quickly discover they'd been tricked. He looked up and spoke. You are very clever, amigo. Thanks. It risky, Kimasabi. It's worth trying, Toto. Take this man to the sheriff after dark. 
His capture is to be kept secret until I go through with my plan. Uh, me tell Sheriff. Tell him that posing as El Diablo, I'll plan with the gang to rob the express office at dawn. Suggest that he and his men wait in hiding. Then we'll capture the gang. A short time later, the transformation was complete, and the Lone Ranger stood before Tonto, saying, Well, amigo, do I not look like El Diablo? Huh? <laughs> uh, you do plenty good job. I'll take his horse now and follow the other two men to the hideout. Tie him on silver and take him to the sheriff. If all goes well, we'll have the whole gang by morning. Perhaps, senor, the morning will bring you a bigger surprise than you think. Mounted on the bandit leader's horse, the Lone Ranger picked up the trail of Blackie and Tex. Though they had taken precautions to cover their tracks, the masked man finally managed to find them. At the cabin, Blackie, Tex, and the other three crooks discussed what had happened. If Russ got away from the two hombres, he should have been here by now. Maybe he's taking time to cover his tracks. Uh, well, I say if he doesn't show up within the next half hour, we'd better hit the trail for the border. Uh, yeah, doggone it. Those two hombres sure spoil things for us. I wonder... Uh, hey, that sounds like Russ now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hi, oh, Russ. Oh, man alive. Are we glad to see you. What happened? Those hombres were hard to get rid of, amigo. Yeah, I reckon so, but you had us plenty worried. <laughs> You must not worry. El Diablo can take care of himself, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have decided to pull a job at dawn, senors. There is much cash at the express office. We shall go and take it, huh? Hey, why do you keep up the act? You usually... Wait a minute, Tex. That... El Diablo, what's happened to your English? My English? Cover him, man. That's not right. Yeah. Instantly, five threatening guns pointed at the Lone Ranger. Yeah. He realized he had slipped up somewhere, but tried to bluff his way through. Shrugging his shoulders, he said, <laughs> What is this little joke, amigo? It's no joke, mister. You're not El Diablo. Oh, sure. <laughs> Why do you say that? Do I not look like myself? How have I changed? You huh? do look like him. You did a clever job of imitating. But the real Diablo doesn't use an accent when he's with us. And I'm sure now the tone of your voice is different. Oh. What's his name? And his. And his. Well, senor. Yeah, I'm you all... don't know, mister. And somehow El Diablo fooled you into thinking he's really Mexican. That's why you kept up the accent. Russ only used it on jobs. That's right. A mm -hmm. couple of you take his guns while we cover him, then tie him to a chair. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty hi yo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. <laughs> Stranger, <laughs> what the matter? <laughs> Mickey snack cakes. <laughs> Mickey snack cakes? Me know they best tasting snack cakes, but what's so funny? <laughs> They're smile food. <laughs> mm. I ate a Mickey banana flip and began smiling. <laughs> Mickey Jim Jam and began laughing. <laughs> Mickey Devil's Delight and I broke down. <laughs> Me taste. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Away! to continue. The Lone Ranger realized he was trapped, and it was useless to keep up the pretext any longer. Covered by guns in the hands of three of the men, he also realized escape at the moment was out of the question. As two of the men tied him to a chair, he spoke in his normal voice. So El Diablo isn't really a Mexican. Right, and now I know that you aren't either. Where's Russ? In jail. What? Huh? Yes, where he belongs. They got him. Yeah. And if this hombre found his way here, others may do the same thing. Wait, wait a minute now. While posing as El Diablo, this hombre told us we were to hold up the express office at dawn. I figure he planned to lead us into a what? trap. Hey, that's right. In that case, nobody'd come after him till morning. 
We don't have to worry about that. Well, what are we going to do? We'll plug this hombre later, then head for the border. Why don't we plug him right now? Because I want to make him regret interfering in our business. Meanwhile, under cover of darkness, Tonto had delivered the bandit leader to the sheriff and outlined the Lone Ranger's plan. Well, by to our friend the masked man sure has courage and brains. Keep this hombre covered, Tonto, while I untie him and put on handcuffs. Then I'll take him into a cell. Uh, Quickly, the sheriff untied El Diablo. Then as he pushed the man's sleeves up to put on the handcuffs, he suddenly exclaimed... Hey, gee, what's this? His hands and wrists are dyed, Tonto. Uh-huh. His arms are white. I'll rip open his shirt. Hey, this is no Mexican... His chest is as white as pork fat. Uh, That's not good. Uh, watch him a minute. I'll get some water and rub it on his face. All right, Sheriff. So you found out I'm not Mexican. The Sheriff said nothing, but came back and washed the dye from the leader's face. Well, Jiminy, this is Russ Selden. Why, he, he rode with a posse the other day when we looked for El Diablo's gang. <laughs> and now you know everything. But let me tell you this. The hombre who went to find the gang is in for trouble. That's right, Sheriff. Him not know El Diablo, not Mexican. Yeah, and he doesn't know I never use the accent when I'm with the gang. They'll spot him for a fake and take care of him. Well, come on, you. I'll put you where you belong. After taking El Diablo into a cell, the sheriff rejoined Toto. Hey, Toto. You think they'll really find out the masked man is impersonating their leader? Mm, me think him in plenty danger. What do we do? You get posse, Sheriff. Me go to Narrow Valley, then wait for moonlight and follow tracks, a lone ranger. Yeah? You and posse follow. Me leave clear trail. We'll be ready to ride in ten minutes. Not good. Me go now, take lone ranger's horse. Try find hideout before it's too late. <laughs> Later at the hideout cabin, Blackie left his chair and walked to a window. The moon's coming up now. We'll wait a while longer, then give that hombre what he deserves and leave for the border. Just who are you, mister? Does that matter? Answer me. If I weren't tired, I'd beat you to a pulp. Ah, uh, shut up. I'll remember that. Let him alone, Blackie. We're about ready to leave now. Let me gun him and get it over with. How about it, mister? You ready to take a bullet? <laughs> Grab your gun and stand behind him, Tex. I'll count to three, then you let him have it. Why well, go through all that? I like to watch him squirm. Go ahead. Well, all right. I'll stand over here. You ready, Tex? Yeah. Yeah, start counting. One. As Blackie spoke the first number, the Lone Ranger tensed inwardly, but he was determined not to show any emotion before the men who stood staring expectantly at him. Two. The masked man had not lost all hope of escape. Without moving his lips, he said a silent prayer that he be spared if it be the Lord's will. His clear eyes caught and held those of the man Blackie for a moment. The outlaw hesitated. Then, looking away, spoke the fatal number. Three. A startling shot came not from the outlaw's gun, but from Tonto's. The Indian fired from the side window a split second before Tex could fire. That shot came through the side window. Grab your guns, men! I'll finish off that hombre. You drop gun. Oh, get him! At that moment, the sheriff and his men appeared at all the windows. The sheriff called out. Don't break another men. My men will trim you. I'm coming in, Tonto. A moment later, the sheriff strode into the cabin with his men. All right, all right. All right. Me get you loose, Kim Sabi. Thanks, Tonto. You were the answer to my prayers. This was almost my finish. Well, Tonto came on ahead of us. I'm mighty glad he did. So am I, Sheriff. Are you free now? Me see your guns on side table. Me get them. Oh, thanks, Tonto. Sheriff, these are the followers of El Diablo. I don't know how you realized my impersonation had failed, well, but Well, you... we found out El Diablo isn't Mexican. He's Russ Selden, the drifter cowpoke. Tonto and I figured these men would realize you weren't selling. This is one time I was caught in my own trap. In spite of that, we cut El Diablo and his gang because of you, my friend. The main thing is that you're safe. Yes, Sheriff. But there's one thing more I want to do before we leave here. You, Blackie. Huh? You're not so anxious to slap my face now 
Who are you? Stop bluffing. If they weren't holding guns on us, I'd beat the hide off you. These men aren't going to stop you. Go ahead. All right, take this. That's what I was waiting for. I'll kill you. Yes. Blackie and the Lone Ranger stood toe-to-toe, exchanging hard blows. They were well matched as to size, but the masked man's supple muscles and superior strength soon gave him the advantage. As they fought, the skull on Blackie's face gradually gave way to a look of surprise. Then as he was rocked by the hard, well-placed blows, Blackie showed fear and panic. I'll show you. I'll break your neck. This is for the slaps in the face. And this for trying to shoot me. Oh, oh, wait. Wait, I've had enough. All right, get him to his feet, men. Handcuff him. All right, champ. I reckon he'd think twice before I'd ever stand up to our friend again. We'll search this cabin for the cash they stole from the express office. I saw Blackie counting packets of cash a while ago, Sheriff. Yeah? He put it back into the table drawer until they were ready to leave. Yep, here's the cash with the express company wrappers on it. We'll take it as evidence. Good. Tell her that you bring silver. Uh-huh. Him outside with Scout. Good enough. We'll leave now, Sheriff. Our job here is done. My men and I'll handle these crooks. In that case, we'll say adios. Goodbye to you. Get these coyotes ready to take back to town. That's it. Who is that hombre who posed as El Diablo? A man who usually wears a mask instead of a disguise. And one who always gets the best to blow down crooks like you and El Diablo, no matter how smart you think you are. Easy, Lone Ranger. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Listen to the Lone Ranger. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto finished their meeting with Chief Thundercloud and started south toward their camp. They had ridden but a short distance when they saw Dan Reed approaching. Oh, 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 oh. Dan was supposed to wait for us in camp, Tonto. wonder why he came all this way. Him way. Him look excited. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, oh, steady, boys. I have a lot to tell you. Dan, what's wrong? There may be war between the Cados and the Comanches. But those are peaceful Indians. They're not peaceful now. There's been trouble brewing for the past week. Each tribe thinks the other is stealing food and other things. And both tribes have tried to get the stock of rifles from the trading post. Them Indians not know how to use rifles. Wait, let me tell you. Jake Feeney is living with the Comanches. What? Feeney with the Comanches? Yes, sir. He'd show the Indians how to use rifles. And there's another white man in the Cado village. While I was at the trading post, word came in that the Comanches had captured the son of the Cotto chief. That mean plenty of trouble. The Cottos are holding a council meeting. They may start their war dance tonight. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>